Hello, everyone. Let's go ahead and pray. Well, God, I thank you once again for another day. I thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Uh, Lord, as we come together on tonight, I just ask that you continue to open up our hearts and our minds, that we may receive your word. I pray that you lend us your understanding, that we may comprehend the things that we are learning. And God, I pray that whatever you have for us, Lord, that we will receive it. I pray for that person who really has been wanting to hear from you, God, that they will receive whatever it is that you have for them on tonight. In Jesus' name I pray, thank God, and amen. All right. So I hope that you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Um, You know, and even if you did it, There's always something to be thankful or grateful for. Never, ever reach a point in your life where you feel like, well, there's just nothing to be thankful about. Um, Because especially when it comes to God, there's always something that we can give thanks for. So if you are somebody who maybe you're not close to your family, but you at least have somebody, some loved one in your life, that's enough to give thanks. If you are still here, that's enough to give thanks. Right? So there's always something that we can just give God thanks for. Never forget that. Okay? So, uh, need to do a small recap. It's been a minute. Um, we are currently, we're still in the book, um, Priority Time, Addicted to God's Word by Chris Conley. And right now, right, we're going through those personal, um, I was going to say personal application. <laughs> we're going through the steps it takes to build that godly addiction, right? And so we're still on personal application, and we are about to go into the second part of that, right? There was two things about personal application. The first was that personal application is practical. So we went through all of that, right? We need to ask those questions um, as we are doing our focused thinking, right? We go into the application part of it, and we should be asking ourselves some questions when it comes to applying God's word, okay? Now we are going into the second part of it, which is personal application is a responsibility and a reward. Um, Technically, part two, I would say kind of has maybe like two or three parts kind of broken up into it, but all of it is essential, right? All of it is focusing on why is it our responsibility and how it's a reward, right? So, first thing, we're going to go to James. Oops, sorry. We're going to go to James chapter 4, and we're going to read verse 17. Again, James chapter 4. Verse 17. And today, be reading from King James Version. So it reads, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And there's James chapter 4, verse... Right? Let's read that again. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Now, I know there's probably that person out there, I I don't get all the doeth and knoweth. (laughs) Basically saying, you know to do what's right, and you still don't do it, that's sin. Okay? And basically, this is where we're going with about that responsibility part, right? It's not enough to know God's word, right? We kind of talked about that last time. It's not enough to be a hearer of God's word. We want to be doers. Because James already told us, right, 
I think it was James 1 and uh, 22. How it talks about how if we are just hearers only and not doers of the word, we end up deceiving our own selves. And we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that we are doers of the word. Okay? So, quote from the book, once we know what a passage means, talking about scripture, once we know what a passage means, we are responsible and accountable to obey the truth. Again, referencing back to the scripture we just read, James 4 and 17. Okay? And don't, you know, I can't think of it right now. It's always when I want to call the scripture out that I immediately forget. But um, I will post it in the in the church's Facebook page, right? But there's a scripture specifically, right? I think it's in Romans where Paul says, you know, ignorance is not an excuse, right? Because God has made himself known to all of us. So you can't say, well, you know, I didn't know. And it, no, you're, you're still going to be punished, right, for not, you know, either you choose to live for him or you don't, right? The thing is, as his children, right, we say we're children of God, we say we're saints, right, we're servants of the Lord, we are held even more so accountable for this word. So you can't be going around talking about, oh, well, no. You know, uh, Timothy says that we're supposed to be worksmen of the word, right? We're, we're supposed to know it. You have to... Be uh, and I forgot what the word is in the Greek, but it, it means something like artisan, right? Where it's like I am a, a master of the word. Like I, no, but remember, we don't only just know it; we do it. So whatever you do know, you are now held accountable to apply it in your life. There's no getting around this. You know how we are. We like to look for loopholes. Oh, well, if I just don't read it. Uh, actually, Timothy said you're supposed to, supposed to be reading it, studying it. Psalms says I'm supposed to meditate on it day and night. There's no getting around it. <laughs> that in itself, though, right, shows that there's a problem there if you're constantly trying to find a way to sin without, quote, unquote, sinning. We talked about that in the latter, in the earlier part of the book, right? If you're finding yourself in a place where you're trying to sin without technically sinning, you've already sinned. So just just stop. <laughs> so application, and this is by Conley, application is sowing and reaping. And I believe right, at least for the ladies, we kind of touched on that in the women's Bible study in Galatians, right? Be not deceived, for God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap, right? I think that's Galatians 6 and 7, <laughs> okay? So it's all about sowing and reaping, okay? So this is a direct quote from the book. If we sow seeds of disobedience, we reap blessings. If we sow seeds of disobedience, we reap consequences. Oh, I'm sorry. I read that wrong. If we sow seeds of obedience, right, now you're going to be blessed and you're being disobedient. If we, reap, if we sow seeds of disobedience, we reap blessings. If we sow seeds of disobedience, we reap consequences. There are consequences for everything you do. Again, there's no getting around that. Uh, we can look at King Saul for that example, right? There was consequences for him being disobedient to what God told him to do, and then he lied. Like, God wasn't there. Like, he didn't see what he did, right? So, again, if I'm a doer, I'm obedient do what God has said because I'm doing what he told me to do. If I hear him but I don't do it, 
okay, that's reaping seeds of disobedience because now I know what you said, but I'm still not going to do it. It's disobedience, right? So God wants us to be faithful with little so he can put us in charge of more. And again, that's from the end of the quote from Conley, right? And we kind of touched on that too. How are you going to ask God for increase, but you haven't shown yourself to be faithful over what he's given you now? You're not a good steward over what he's given you now. You have not proven yourself to be obedient and faithful, right? And again, that word faith, right? I am persuaded. I am convinced. He's thoughts, right? I'm convinced that God is who he says he is. And because I believe and I'm convinced and persuaded that God is who he says he is, I'm going to do what he tells me to do. I am going to obey. And through my obedience, my faith increases. Because I've proven to be faithful. Hint, hint, I've proven to be obedient. Right? But yeah, he wants to give you more, but it's like you can't even handle the, the little assignment that I gave you. And you sit here trying to, you know, ask to be in charge of, you know, hundreds of thousands, and I, you won't even uh, disciple the one person that I put in your life. So, something to think about, right? Okay, so again, uh, going back to Melissa, right, it's not enough to ask questions. Okay, now remember that first part, right, when we are doing our quiet time or, you know, uh, priority time, and we are meditating on the Word of God, right, which is more than just reading, giving, and scanning. We're asking those questions, our interrogative questions. We're really combing over it. We're thinking about what God said, and now we're in the applying phase, right? We've observed. We've done that interpretation. Now we're applying, okay? So we ask those questions, right? Why do I need to apply this? Uh, uh, where do I need to apply? When? What? How? And then who do I need to share this with, right? But we have to do more than that. Okay, so it's not enough to just ask some questions, uh, right? Uh, one thing that Conley says is if we ask better questions, or if we ask a better question, we get a better answer. So again, kind of going back to what I was talking about last time, right? It is not enough. It's really easy to just ask these basic generic questions, right? You know, or even give a basic generic answer or the answer that you think is a godly response, but it's not what's actually in your heart, right? So we don't want to just ask random questions, just like we don't want to just give random answers. Better question, better answer. And so he gives us some examples of some, you know, a question you should ask versus a question you really shouldn't ask. Okay, and the other thing that he instructs us to do is to make your questions personal. Okay, so the first part, I'm sorry I skipped over that. The first part to asking a better question is to start with what or how, not why, when, or who. Because remember, personal application. So first thing we want to do is start with what or how. Then the second thing is we want to make it personal, not they, them, we, right? You, meaning that you. <laughs> well, why don't you? No, it should be why don't I? Why should you? Why should I? How could you, how could I, it needs to be personal, me, I, myself, okay? And the final thing is focus on action, okay? So here are some of the examples that he has. Ask, what can I do to grow spiritually? That's a pretty good question, right? Don't ask. 
Why isn't attending church enough? Not a good question. Right? Well, we, we won't say it's not a good question, but asking what can I do to grow spiritually is a better question, right? Because attending church isn't going to be enough. It's good that you go to church. We talked about that too. It's good that you go to church. It's good that you go to Bible study. It's good that you volunteer your time at the church, X, Y, Z. But if you were not applying, if you were not a doer, you, you, you're not going to have any transformation, right? And if you want to see real transformation in your life, you're going to have to do a little bit more. You're going to have to be in your word a little bit more. You're going to have to dig a little more, right? So ask, what can I do to grow spiritually and not, what, why isn't attending church enough? Another example uh, of a good question, a better question, what can I do to develop myself? Not, when are they going to train me? That, nope. Nope. Remember, personal application. This is your personal responsibility to know your word, do your word, spend time with the Lord, build on your relationship, right? Yes, like I said, going to, going to church is good. That's a start. Going to Bible study is also good. But after church and after Bible study, I still have to go spend time with the Lord because how I'm a poor into somebody and I'm empty. How can I teach something that I have not taken time to study and understand for myself? How am I going to tell somebody to apply something I'm not applying in my own life? Great. So, what can I do to develop myself is a better question than where are they going to train me? Mm-mm. Take some responsibility and accountability for your for your salvation. Okay. And the last one, uh, a better question: How can I develop a healthy lifestyle? And not why does cheesecake taste so good? <laughs> Right? This, this, you're kind of, I would say on that last one again, it's kind of like the, the second one. You're shirking, you're kind of trying to pass off accountability. You're not holding yourself accountable for lack of self control, for lack of discipline. Right? Like, man, well, you know, I remember when I had issues with lust. I still do. But it was real bad. <laughs> you know? And I remember there was one day looking at uh, some dude that I should not have been looking at him that way, and God called me on it. And I turned around I was like, well, God, why you make him like that? <laughs> not, Lord, forgive me. Uh, what do I need to do to see, you know, men as my brothers in Christ? and not an object, right? What do I need to do to learn how to love them and see them the way you see them, right? What what things do I need to change in my life that are causing me to view them this way? You know, no, I didn't ask that. I turned around and was like, well, why are you making them that fine? Like, you made them. Why you made them look that good? That's not a good, you know, it's like, eh. So... Again, we're taking accountability for ourselves, right? So learn to make it personal. Start with that what or how, okay? And focus on action. What do I need to do to start, you know, to really have true change in my life? How can I grow more? Right? How can I be more patient instead of why are they so annoying? (laughs) You get you get what we're saying over here. Okay. So another quote from Conley: Learning is not attending, listening, or reading, nor is it merely gaining knowledge. Learning is really about translating, knowing what to do 
into doing what we know. It's about changing. If we have not changed, we have not learned. Now, this is actually a quote that Colleen included in the book from another book called uh, The Question Behind the Question by John Miller. Okay. Um, and that quote in itself reminded me of a Hebrew word that we learned or that I learned uh, in another woman's Bible study that I go to called Shema, right? In the Hebrew culture, if you were told something, told to do something, and you did not do it, right, then you did not Shema, which means, oh, you must not have heard properly. You must not have been listening. You didn't hear it. Because if you heard it, you would have done it. And I don't even know why. It kind of reminds me of, you know, my mom a little bit. Like, did you not hear what I said? <laughs> Type thing. Like, oh, no, you didn't hear me. Because if you had heard me, you would have told what I told you. To, you would have done what I told you to do, right? So we need to shama, right? We need to take that knowing what to do, right? We know what to do. Remember, because we're, we're reading our word, right? Loving your enemies. We know what to do. We know what the words say. Those of us who, you know, really in our word like that, yeah, you know, you at least know one scripture. If you're really studying, you know, like, oh, yeah, I know, I know that. But we need to change it into doing what we know. We need to do it. We go from knowing to doing, okay? So, again, it, is if you haven't changed because you have not learned. And what is learning? Knowing what to do and taking it and transforming it into doing what you know. The ma <laughs> It's a made-up word, but, yeah, the ma. Okay? So this next part, uh, kind of dipping a little bit into this final part, but we won't be able to get through all uh, this time, so we'll have to go over the last part uh, next week. Okay, but this next little part, okay, what is the responsibility of personal application? For this, Conley refers us to Second Timothy. So let's go there. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 through 17. Okay. And again, I'll be reading from King James. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. And I'm going to read that again. All scripture, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Okay, so there are four things from this, right? Now, again, this is uh, King James, but other translations might have something a little different, okay? But here are the four main things that we get from these uh, verses, right? With personal application, when we're talking about Scripture, okay? There are four things that it's good for that Timothy just told us, right? Teaching, reproof, correction, and training. So that doctrine, teaching, reproof, correction, and then King James's instruction, other translations might have training. Teaching, reproof, 
correction training. Now, what is that? What, what are they exactly? Okay. Teaching is what should I know, right? You have to be taught how to live for God. You have to be taught how to serve God. You have to be taught how to love your enemies. That is still popping up. Somebody struggling with that one. You have to be taught what it, what it means to be faithful, right? The disciples even asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. So we don't ever want to get into this kind of place where we feel like, oh, I, I know what to do. I know what I'm doing. And, you know, I feel like we've all been guilty of that at some point. You just showed up. You have no idea how something is functioning, but you already know what to do. <laughs> right? Like, don't ever, you should always be in a place of humility. And remember, like, you know what? Even with all the know-how, quote-unquote know-how that I have, I still don't know what I'm doing. I'm always going to need God's help. I'm always going to be learning new things. Okay? So, teaching, what should I know? Reproof, what should I stop? Right? What things do I need to stop doing? <laughs> okay. Uh, correction, what should I change? Now, you might, you feel like in a way, right, the reproof and correction seem the same is not. Okay, when I reprove your behavior, when God reproves our behavior, right, we are reproved through his word, like, hey, 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 that's a sin, <laughs> right? When I'm corrected, right, what should I change? It's like, okay, we got something, something's got to give, right? Kind of like we talked about earlier, we stop making those excuses, we start dropping those weights in our life. It has to get to a point where it's like, okay, some, something's got to be different, right? When I'm reproved, I now am aware, like, oh, I, okay, had no idea that, you know, just like a child. Students don't know it until they're going to do something. They're like, hey, 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 don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, right? When you correct them, Either they go to do it again or something like that, like, hey, didn't I tell you? Right? So what should I stop? Reproof. Is it need to stop doing? Correction, what should I change? Got to be some change in order to be transformation. Okay. Training, what should I start? Right? What should I start doing? Right? What assignments do I need to do? What should I start? God, what do you need me to do? What will you have for me to do? What work are you calling me to? Okay. So that uh, is it for now. And then, like I said, we will go over the very last part uh, next week. But for now, we are going to pray out. Um, and just hold on to that. Um, most likely we'll review again because it is a lot. <laughs> okay. But that is something to consider and think about in your own life. Right? At least start there. What things do I need to learn? Right? What do I need to stop doing? What do I need to change? Right. What do I need to do, change as and do more of or less of? And then what do I need to start? Right? I need to start a prayer life. I need to start fasting. I need to start meditating on the Word. Right. Whatever that start is, seek the Lord in that. I promise you, He will reveal it to you. Always. So let's go ahead and pray. Lord God, I thank you once again for another day. I thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Lord, I thank you for the lesson on tonight. 
God, I pray that you will show us those areas that need to change. I pray you show us things we need to stop doing. God, I pray that you will continue to give us the wisdom and give us direction in what we're learning because we want to make sure that the things we are learning are of you, that they are correct, that is accurate, that we're not taken in dogma or misinformation or these misconceptions of who you are and what it means to live for you, that we are actually living for you by your word and not what man thinks or our feelings or opinions. God, I thank you and I celebrate you for being the great I am, for correcting us, for chastising us as a father who loves a child. Lord, I am thankful that I am loved by you. And Lord, I just pray that you continue to grow that zeal and fire in each and every single one of us to draw closer to you, to truly know you for ourselves. In Jesus' name I pray, thank God, and amen. All right, everybody, take care. Have a great weekend. And ladies, see y'all on Tuesday. (laughs) Bye.